Electric extra scooters getting out everywhere. All right, it's uh, Monday morning. Uh, it's very, very quiet today in Davao City. Very, very quiet. Um, it's leading up to Holy Week and nothing goes on in Holy Week. Everything shuts down, so everybody's getting uh, getting themselves uh, together. Uh, there's Claveria and the uh, Chinatown Bridge, the arch, you know, in Chinatown. But Claveria, tallest building in Davao City. And we're walking that way. Even though it's quiet, doesn't stop people using the horn. There we go. Uh, I've just picked up my um, SRR visa. Um, I've got two years on the card. Fantastic. I uh, had a chat with the guys in the office. It's looking good. They've moved the office around. So that confused me a little bit. Um, and uh, here, over the years, it's got cleaner and cleaner here. So this here is a, um, a junction box for the electricity because they're putting the cables underground. So those cables over there are a tenth of what used to be here. But the skies around in Davao City will start looking like this, clean. They won't be like other cities where they have all the cabling sitting above the road and above the sidewalks and above uh, uh, where people live. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things, you have to just accept it. It's really hot today, which is great. Uh, vendors are opening up. There's guys selling their shoes. They come into the city, uh, buy up cheap shoes out in the provinces, bring them in here, find anybody that wants to buy them. Uh, hard life, not an easy life. Oh look, there's my ATM. Ah ha ha. The trucks of life. Nice breeze today. Mangoes, get some breakfast. So this is a fruit stall. Just getting ready for today. So down that way it goes to Avida Towers and uh, San Pedro. This way goes to Boynton Street. This goes to Boynton Street. Nine o'clock in the morning. roads are really really nice and they're all nice and tarmac now but they haven't done anything with the sidewalks you know, they're all up and down and higgledy piggledy it'll be nice when they turn around and they do uh, do the sidewalks there we go taxi It's a Cassia Hotel on JP L'Oreal. So traffic today, it's 20 past nine. Look at it. Normally it is rammed on a Monday. Everybody coming in to town, everybody getting to where they got to turn around and work. But today, it's the lead up to Holy Week, as I said. So I've just been to the bank, picked up some money. I've paid my credit card uh, because uh, You've got to do those things, otherwise they turn around and get you into trouble. Just a, a heads up, if you turn around and you write checks in the Philippines and uh, you turn around and they, they bounce or they're not honoured, uh, you can actually uh, be jailed. It's a criminal offence to give somebody a check in the Philippines that is not going to turn around and be honoured at the bank because you don't have any money. Just a little bit of, of heads up on a uh, Monday morning at uh, 25 past nine. 
So this hotel was built a couple of years ago and the path to the roadway outside is already falling to bits. Wow, look at that. I was talking to the lady in the bank today. She comes from the same town out in the province that Annie does. However, she's not been in that town for about 10 years and she's going back this week for Holy Week to see her mother. So, uh, very, very, very family orientated. Very strong family values here in the Philippines. Uh, today I'm gonna turn around and uh, somebody asked me in my blog the other day, um, because I've been here for now seven years and how did I turn around and uh, stay here for seven years without a pension? Um, what did I do? How did I plan it? Uh, and what, what advice do I have or what info do I have? Uh, so yeah, it's seven years living in the Philippines, not earning any money, not having a pension, and living on your savings. Um, has it been hard? Let's find out. So, um, yeah. Retirement. Uh, so we have to go back a few years, uh, and I have to turn around and put my thinking cap on. So, uh, how did I get to the Philippines? And how did I manage to have a life? Well, when I was back in the UK, I'd been looking to retire around 55, uh, but the government kept playing around with pensions and uh, cheating the people that are in the, in the UK. Because uh, what you've got to remember is when I was younger, the government turned around and said, oh, you need your state pension, but you need to get a secondary pension. Um, so millions and millions and millions of people did this. Uh, I got to um, my 50s and I'd set up my private pension to mature at 55. However, the government had turned around and said I could retire at 64. And then they changed the rules and turned around and said it was 65. Then it changed the rules and said it was 66. Now it's 68 in the UK. Uh, which I think is um, a travesty for people that work all of their life giving taxes for the, to the, uh, the British government and the British government can't manage pension funds because they're more interested in managing paying themselves huge salaries uh, and uh, not, not delivering what they said they're going to do as a politician. Anyway. Uh, I turned around and uh, got a bit despondent about this, as you can tell. I wanted to retire at 55, I wanted to turn around and uh, go and live overseas. I didn't want to live in the UK, uh, because I didn't think that my two pensions would be able to cover the cost of living in the UK. And I'd looked at my mother and I looked at my father before he passed away and what they were spending on their house, which is an asset, but it's also a liability. Uh, on their car, which is an asset, but it's also a liability. Uh, and what people turn around and what I find is they don't look at what they need to live on. They look at a level of richness that they can afford and can their pension afford it well what you've got to understand that with the uk pension is your pension gets paid out and if you earn over a certain amount of money it used to be ten thousand five hundred pesos you got taxed well you it's very difficult to live on ten thousand uh sorry ten thousand pounds a year in the uk you have to have a supplementary pen pension. So you have a secondary pension, you draw on that second second pension, and then all of a sudden you're over 10,000 and the tax man wants to turn around and tax you on that pension. Right? Yeah. It's wrong in my opinion. Because one, 
you've already Can you say good morning? Morning mom Salamat Mom, you know how to say Tagalog? Gamay 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 Konti lang Salamat Thank you So what actually happens is that you get taxed So you've turned around and earned that money paid tax on it and you've paid it into a pension fund when you take it out of that pension fund after it's done what it's got to turn around and do they then turn around and tax you on it as unearned income but hang on you're telling everybody to take a pension and then you're taxing them when they draw the pension out the pension's there to support that person in retirement and you're taxing them so then the government this is back in this is back it went on 55 i'm going i'm going going the long route round, and then they turn around and started coming up with all of these allowances for water and they're doing these for old people and they're doing this for old people and they're doing that so all of a sudden they're taxing the old people but they're actually giving it back to you is uh as fuel subsidy or heating allowance or food allowance or bus allowance or what's the point all you're doing is employing people to do turn around and do that, that paperwork when you just turn around and make sure all pensions are tax free the government employees like the ministers and the uh, government officials all their pensions are tax free when they retire which I, I turned around and I thought this ain't right 